Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the Pisces Solar Festival webinar of the 2025 initiative. My name is Alexander, and I welcome you on behalf of the 2025 initiatives coordination group. Today, our guest and a member of our circle uh, is Kathy Newburn. Hello, Kathy. Hi, Sasha. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining the circle today. And uh, I don't think I need to introduce Kathy as we all work in the same circle, and many of you know. Uh, Kathy, but I will just say a few words that uh, Kathy is a long friend uh, of mine and uh, of the 2025 initiative. And uh, she works at uh, Lucy's Trust in New York. And uh, she is a long time member of this circle. And uh, before I will pass the microphone to Kathy because she will, will lead us in the alignment today. I invite you to visualize our circle and with people joining from around the world and just look into the control panel where you can see the attendees list. And I just suggest we take a moment of silence going through the lists and noticing familiar and unfamiliar names and linking heart to heart with light and love with each other. And as we visualize our ring of fiery love linking us through space, I invite Kathy to lead us through the alignment. Okay. So before we open with a, a mantra, I just wanted to begin with a, a brief visualization. This is a visualization of the network of light. So lift your consciousness to as high a point on the mental plane as possible. Now look out over the world, seeing it as one of light with here and there points and centers of intensified light. See the energies of this network of light pulsating to the rhythm of human aspiration. Regard yourself within this planetary network as a channel among many channels, transmitting the energy of the spiritual hierarchy.
Imagine the potent love energy pouring through the network of light, stimulating the many points and centers of energy, transforming the pulsation of energy into the rhythm of the planetary heartbeat. We sound together the invocation of light. Radiance are we and power. We stand forever with our hands stretched out, linking the heavens and the earth, the inner world of meaning and the subtle world of glamour. We reach into the light and bring it down to meet the need. We reach into the silent place and bring from thence the gift of understanding. Thus with the light we work and turn the darkness into day. Thank you everyone and just to say welcome again and thank you for the invitation to present at this auspicious time within the spiritual year. Pisces as you know is the, <clears throat> the culminating sign of the zodiac as it's presently constituted and it's therefore said to be the richest of all the signs because Pisces being such a sensitive, uh, receptive, receiving plate, um, it takes from all of the other signs and therefore it's the most rich and the most full. It takes um, so that it can give because Pisces is of all, above all else, the sign of the world savior, the sign of sacrifice. And so we, um, who work each month within, within the annual cycle to um, capture the key qualities of any particular sign under consideration at the time of the full moon, we then work to bring those um, cultivated thought forms to the attention of all others in the world. And so with this sign of Pisces, it's, as I said, it's ultimately about service, about sacrifice, about standing as a collective group, which is what we are, um, mediating between hierarchy and humanity, because that's essentially the work of the telepathic communicators of which we can all form a part. It's to be that bridging or mediating group. And so we work um, very closely um, in conjunction with that greater group of the new group of world servers um, who do precisely that. But this group, um, the Tibetan says, this group of telepathic communicators has a particularly close relationship to the inner core of the group of world servers. So we can work to um, aid in grounding those who work at that inner core, who truly have perfected the ability to work subjectively. Um, we can stand as an outgrowth of their work and thereby help in distributing the energies each month to all the other members of the new group of world servers and then in consequence to all men and women of goodwill and open and receptive hearts and minds so it's a it's a great chain uh, we're part of that great chain of hierarchical impression and that's our opportunity um, and the, the Tibetan has told us that the essential work of those who work within these, some of these specialized seed groups like this group of the telepathic communicators is really to aid the hierarchy in its primary task, 
which is to act as a group that is combating the tremendous power of glamour and illusion, what is, which is controlling in the planet at this time. And we know that the real first blow to the forces of glamour in the world were struck uh, 2,500 years ago by the Buddha and his group of arhats who worked together in Northern India. And through the Buddha's annunciation, we're told of the Four Noble Truths and the Eightfold Noble Path, that this was precisely a tremendous blow to this group of world servers. But now, all these many years later, there is a growing uh, group of individuals in the world today who will, at the time of the coming forward of the world teacher, be able to collectively strike a very powerful blow at this world glamour, we're told. And so we're really in, in preparatory stages for that cooperative effort. But I thought it might be helpful to read um, the way the Tibetan succinctly summarizes the message, the essential mes message of the Four Noble Truths, to keep it in mind, because as I said, our work as telepathic communicators um, is to re really help with this um, dissipation of glamour. And these Four Noble Truths are a preeminent way in which we can contribute to that effort. So he says, cease to identify yourselves with material things. Gain a proper sense of the spiritual values. Cease regarding possessions and earthly existence as of major importance. And follow the noble eightfold path. So it's a simple, simple injunction perhaps, but as we know, not always very simply realized by humanity because of the incredible um, conditions of glamour and illusion, which are so thick at this time of the withering of the law in preparation for the externalization. So the orientation suggested by these noble truths and our willingness to apply them in our daily lives become the means whereby we can contribute to, to the glamours, not only the glamours in our own lives, however, but more importantly, as we work together with each other and with the core, this core of the new group of world servers, which is part of the hierarchy itself, then we can contribute towards the hierarchical task, as I said, of combating the glamour in our world, the collective glamour. DK tells us that this group of telepathic communicators is not a large group. And it is, as I said, a bridging group, much more concerned with subjective service rather than objective realization. The members are very much sensitives. Um, and although they may function outwardly as teachers, writers, leaders, as their spiritual lives begin to take them deeper into the heart of this type of work, as I said, they will increasingly recede into greater subjective orientation because that is their strength. They're here to foster telepathic interplay in the world, to bridge the gap between the seen and the unseen, and thereby they're helping to establish continuity of consciousness, which is really the next step in our, our planetary evolution, continuity of consciousness, whereby the fear of death that is presently, as it's presently understood, will be vanished. But the Tibetan does say that the lot or the, the way for this particular band of servers, the telepathic communicators, is particularly difficult and he says that's the case because of their overwhelming sensitivity and the fact also that they have not achieved the attainment within consciousness of those who are ahead of them who are equally sensitive but they've learned to handle the impacts without taking um, 
so much stress into their physical vehicles. Those of us who are in this telepathic communication group have not yet really learned fully clearly how to work within this world of form. We're not so as not to be unduly affected by it. We're too responsive to vibrations coming from the form side of life. And we haven't achieved sufficient detachment and we're therefore consequently too responsive to world pain. We see too much and yet often lack the vision to see sufficiently into the future and the sense of glory that really is on the horizon. We need to learn to let the future stand revealed. This group is said to be the conveyor of group purpose, for we are becoming responsive as well to the higher will aspect. This group works and is charged to increasingly work in mental matter with thought substance, with the reception and direction of thought currents. And this group will facilitate communication between people and contribute towards the eventual goal of transcending speech as we know it. This group can help to mold public opinion and change the currents of human thinking. What a tremendous opportunity to mold public opinion and to change the currents of human thinking. And one way in which we're encouraged to begin to become more of efficient in this work of telepathic communication is to note and record all telepathic activity and phenomena that we might seize and ground either in words or in logic in our memory. These fleeting deep impressions that come to us particularly at this time of the five to seven day full moon opportunity when the, the normal veils and blockages between hierarchy and humanity are slowly being dissipated and we can therefore become more receptive to these impressions. And we are asked, as I said, to note them down. And at this time of the Pisces full moon, which is a particularly sensitive sign coming collectively under the influence of the great sixth ray sacred planet Neptune, this period, perhaps above all others, can find us increasingly responsive to vibration. And also, of course, I would like to mention the work of triangles, which is so intimately a part of this um, work of the telepathic communicators, because as we know, the triangles network stands as a bridge between hierarchy and humanity, a network of light built by thousands of individuals throughout the planet who each day participate in a meditative alignment with two other people, visualizing themselves as forming a lighted triangle between themselves. And then they extend that alignment of their individual triangle to become as one with the larger network of triangles all over the planet. And as we then sound the great invocation together, we release light and love and the will to good into the, this network. And we do play our part thereby in changing the structure, the very structure of the etheric network of our planetary life, which we're told is now in process of moving from a network of squares, which is reflective of the personality aspect of our planetary life and of humanity and we change that network we bifurcate the squares and turn them into triangles and uh, the triangle triangular network is conducive of the energy of the soul so the triangles work is playing an instrumental role in our planet today and if you would like to find out more about this work and don't know about it, you can go to www.triangles.org and find out more. There's a, a, um, a bulletin board on that page 
where you can find people who are interested in forming triangles all over the world. And you just have to answer a couple of questions to be admitted into that portal. Uh, and also we have a weekly webinar each Monday at 3 p.m. New York time. And anybody is welcome to um, participate in that webinar. And the only other um, thing I'd like to say now is that as most of you know, um, we are now in preparation for the festival week of the new group of world servers, which will be held December 21st through December 28th um, in this year, this December. And this festival week only occurs every seven years. But as the group of telepathic communicators seek to cooperate and become sensitive to the inner core group of workers who stand at the heart of the new group of world servers, we know that their work will be strengthened and given a great opportunity for expression in our preparatory work for this upcoming festival week when the alignments are going to be particularly potent this year. So now we're going through the process of preparing ourselves subjectively for this influx of energy, energies that will pour into our planetary life through the constellation Capricorn. They don't even emanate from that August constellation, but they emanate from a larger, much vaster confluence of stars, which are also conditioned by this powerful energy of initiation and transformation, which is the sign Capricorn and its ruling planet of Capricorn, which is also placed in the sign of Capricorn during this week. We can, as a group, therefore, serve to bridge between the center of the group, which resides within the hierarchy itself, and all the other members of the group of world servers by stepping down these powerful inpouring energies and aiding in their distribution to all the many workers within all the many departments of the group. So thank you, Sasha, and I'll give it over to you. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you for bringing us into the focus of this bridging seed group. And uh, thank you for bringing the focus on the coming opportunity of the festival week in December this year. And uh, as we um, come to the end of the current astrological year cycle and the beginning of the new cycle because we know that Pisces is the last sign in the zodiac and we approach to the beginning of the new year uh it's was on purpose that uh, we the 2025 initiative uh decided to bring our focus to the group of telepathic communicators in the sign of Pisces wrapping up our journey through the year uh, cycle of webinars and thus preparing us for the next cycle as truly this is a very synthetic group and very important group that can um, bring very special gifts to the world group this year and um, therefore today as we prepare to the uh, peak of the full moon in Pisces, we will meditate on the special opportunities that brought to us by this group. And uh, Kathy mentioned uh, the triangles and their definitely special opportunities and it's a special practice that prepares us to more subjective work of telepathic communication. And um, a while ago, uh, we started experimenting in the 2025 initiative webinars, working with the triangles as functional triangles, not only subjective triangles. And uh, as one of these practices is we started inviting triangles of um, presenters. And today we continue this experiment. And uh, today, 
to, together with Kathy, that Maver and I, we will continue to unfold the topic of this seed group of telepathic communicators, bringing it to uh, the group focus. And then uh, after that, we will invite everyone to uh, share own impressions and thoughts about this before we go into meditation. So with this, I want to uh, open our triangle conversation um, between Dot, Kathy, and me, and uh, share further thoughts on the topic of the significance of the triangles as a building block in the unfoldment of the seed group of telepathic communicators. Dot, over to you. Mm, thank you, Alexander, and thank you, Kathy. As always, as you share, it's like as though the uh, well, thus with the light we work and turn the darkness into day. So it, I would like to share just two or three points following your sharing, Kathy and Alexander, as you were just saying, working together in triangles. I want to note initially that more and more we find ourselves working in, tri in triangles subjectively and objectively. I look forward to that conversation. It seems the more intentional we are, the more we serve the triangle network even beyond our gathering weekly and our daily uh, meditation. So one of the things we've been talking about as a triangle is that synthesis is, unity is created. And as you were sharing, Kathy, that it just kept kind of washing through me, we are actually creating a, a unified field through our work mm -hmm. with triangles and our work together with these webinars and so many other initiatives. And as, and you also mentioned, Kathy, the United Group Telepathic Work and how we're combating glamour and illusion. And it's a, it, it's a powerful uh, and <laughs> humbling role that we all choose to play on the planet mm -hmm. right now as etheric substance is in fact our living field of expression. And I, I don't know, Kathy, maybe you speak to that just a little bit. I mean, the conditioning lives right, in Shambhala and hierarchy works strictly through etheric means. And so we are challenged to do that uh, ourselves. And in order to do that, the final thing I'll say up front is there are three key elements made really clear in the book Telepathy uh, that when you were talking about the Four Noble Truths and the Eightfold Path, it made me think of this. The first, first requisite for all of us is impersonality. Mm -hmm. The second is group love and it's stated so clearly your constant effort to be carried forward steadily and slowly must be to bring about a group love of such strength that nothing can break it no barrier rise up between you and then the third one selflessness so and you spoke to all of that basically kathy but then it, it just seems like love is the great conditioner yeah. Yeah, I mean, I always feel that this Pisces energy is is so rich, and there's certain um, misconceptions I think that are shed abroad in the esoteric group about you know superficial interpretations of this sign because you know we are leaving the Piscean age, and so sometimes we tend to disparage this particular energy, but. Uh, in reality, it's it's the richest, as I said, it's the, it's the most opportune time to draw beneath the veil. It's the, it's the last moment of the in-breath, you know, so we really can extend our alignment very high at this point, you know, because of the strong Shambhala connection through this sign and its rulership by first ray planet Pluto. It's a lot of breaking through the veils that you're talking about, breaking through mm. uh, the glamour in the world uh, to effectively working during this time of Pisces, you know. 
preparing the field, like you're saying, preparing the field for the higher interlude, which follows, you know, we're reaching up in consciousness as high as we can. And then during this higher interlude period, we hold that alignment and we become sensitive to the impression that this field of uh, Pisces is, is preparing us for. Mm. So as you share that, Kathy, it makes me think of the festival week that uh, you and Alexander just spoke to, and we are all in preparation now for December 21st to the 28th, 2019, in this seven-year cycle. We know, uh, well, I'll say how critical it is, in the best sense of that word, this opportunity, because hierarchy will be seeking to those groups of us, or as a group, who have created this unified field. So in a way, right now, we are not only uh, pre preparing for a full moon meditation in a little bit, in an exact moment uh, coming up uh, tomorrow, but we are also preparing every day, 24 seven for this mm -hmm. festival. And I wanted to mention something that I've talked with you before about, you know, I've just returned from Australia where we spoke um, I will say often it came up this trip, <clears throat> excuse me, about Sydney as a power station on the planet. And we know that, well, we're told that there will be a planetary center there down the road, uh, a, a piece. But right now, Sydney is a power station. And it seems that in this preparation, as we are building this field, to take note of the planetary centers and those lines of light that we're working with, it seems important yeah yeah the we often talk about the distribution points the five planetary centers through which we release the energies in meditation um, but I perhaps because I'm from New York I have a particular interest in the New York Center um, and its potency in the world um, because if you look in, into the teachings, you'll see that the New York Center stands at the center of the five planetary centers. It's a very powerful, therefore, planetary focal point for all of the importing energies coming in to the planet. They come, in a sense, through New York and, and then are distributed through the other centers. And so there's a particular potency uh, in New York. And I just wanted to put in a word um, for us to, as a group, therefore, it's our center, you know, all the centers are our centers, but particularly New York, because it does focalize the entire um, network of the planet. The UN is there for, it's not, uh, you know, it's not an, uh, an unknown reason why the UN is in New York, it's there because of this focal point. And so I, I just think we need to be supportive of the US and it's, difficult transition through these waters of glamour and mind and illusion that are so strongly extant in our world today. So we have to be supportive of the national life of this country, the great overshadowing soul of this country and to aid it in its struggle to free itself from the grip of these terrific forces. So that's uh, mm. something I want to say. Thank you for putting that in the field. Alexander, can we show that quote now that we had? Yes. And as we show the quote, you know, it, it just it's exactly what we're talking about. When we drop, well, when we love more and drop all sense of criticism and dislike, that's when we have access to the will to good, right? Mm -hmm. Leading to goodwill. Mm -hmm is love in action and so exactly what you're saying Kathy from raise and initiations true democracy is as yet unknown it awaits the time when an educated and enlightened public opinion will bring it to power towards that spiritual event humankind is hastening the battle of democracy will be fought out in the United States yeah. It's interesting to think about the, the triangles be, that form between the planetary centers. And we know that New York is part of 
both triangles together with the, the New York, London, Darjeeling, New York, Tokyo, uh, Geneva. And uh, there is definite indication of um, receptive nature of the New York Center and receptive and distributing. And I think it's interesting to think about the dynamic within any triangle. Uh, I think it's somewhere in the treaties on cosmic fire where uh, TK gives a lot of technical information in relation specifically to triangles. He says that in any particular triangle, there is always one radiating center and two receptive centers. And in time, that dynamic can change and that receptive center can shift. But at this time uh, in history, New York Center is receptive center for all, uh, for both planetary, great planetary center triangles. And uh, as you said, the UN is there and the note of unity that came and coming through the UN is that primer note of our time, the note of unity. Yeah, and, I wanna... and related, it's so related to the, the new group of world servers, you know, many people consider New York the planetary Ajna center. And if that is the case, then all the more reason to link it so strongly with the new group of world servers, because they stand also as the planetary Ajna center. So vision should be a keynote and lighting the way through perhaps bringing some spiritual truths. Uh, they do say the teaching goes out from New York. So perhaps the next dispensation of the teaching will can also be given out in the New York vicinity, just like Alice Bailey and Blavatsky before both worked out of New York a lot of the time. So it's, it's ever, ever more important to prepare the field for this planetary center to be the receptive agent perhaps for this uh, next step forward in our group life. So let's hold the highest for the USA, please. And knowing that that's not a nationalistic act, that's a planetary act. Exactly, exactly. Because it's not about nationalism, obviously. We're, we're moving beyond that, hopefully. I want to bring the, uh, uh, to share with the group the two laws of telepathy. It's in the relations of the note of unity that comes to through the seed group. Uh, it's from telepathy and the etheric vehicle, page five. In union is strength. This is the second law governing telepathic communication. The first law is the power to communicate is to be found in the very nature of substance itself. It lies potentially within the ether and the significance of telepathy is to be found in the word omnipresence. And the second law is the interplay of many minds produces a unity of thought which is powerful enough to be recognized by the brain. I think it's very important uh, to remember this as we uh, build in the unified field of the world servers group. That's this really creates that impetus for coming of the energy of the will to good and creates the space to receive that impulse and distribute it within the humanity. Mm. Yes, yes, and it also speaks to uh, the how of what, so to speak, when we talk about um, public opinion, when we talk about the importance of uh, education in the true sense, drawing forth who we truly are and our role in that, 
uh, these two laws are at the very heart, at the very heart of that. Mm -hmm. And as I was listening for, for uh, Kathy's sharing, I remember that uh, one of the hints that uh, DK gives of, of formulas that all ashrams are located on Antakarana. And probably we could say that all groups that align themselves with the hierarchy we all linked with each other through this etheric substance that permeates everything and working through the collective group antakarana the antakarana of the new group of world servers mm -hmm. yeah and we're such a a, a a wonderfully expressive group because we're composed of people from all rays all astrological energies, all nations of the world, all of us stand at different places on the path. We all follow different teachings, um, and yet we all form part of this collective cable that you're speaking of, this Antakarana, which is um, vastly beautiful and uh, uniting us all in, in a palpable sense of oneness especially at these times of full moon opportunity when we can come together through this etheric network that we have called the internet. And uh, yeah, it's a great, great opportunity. I invite uh, now uh, our audience to join our conversation and share your thoughts uh, and your impressions on the subject of the significance of the triangles and uh, as a building block of the telepathic infrastructure of the new group of world servers. So if you would like to uh, share, please use the function, raise your hand on the control panel and we will unmute you that you could join our conversation. And also you can use chat and uh, the question uh, window on your control panel to share your thoughts in writing. I want to share um, about um, an initiative that started a couple months ago. Uh, it's about weekly alignment in addition to the daily five o'clock alignment that we uh, observe aligning with the new group of world service that we could each uh, Thursday, the day of ruled by Jupiter to have a uh, 10 minutes of silence prior to the five o'clock alignment. And during that 10 minutes of silence to link subjectively with the new group of world service, realizing it as a living entity, realizing it as a manifested reality and sensing its presence and realizing yourself being part of this West, vast group of full servers. And then after 10 minutes of silence, sounding the mantra of the new group of world servers. I found this practice very powerful and there is certain Power, power that emanates through this practice. And I see it helping us build that alignment with the 
world group Anta Karana as we prepare to the festival week. I see Jean and Martha would both like to share something. So I will unmute their several hands. So I uh, unmute Jean. Uh, Jean, please unmute yourself. Uh, it's a microphone on your control panel it's uh, uh, most likely now orange color so if you press it you will unmute yourself uh, and while you figure out that i'm i will unmute marta and marta please also unmute yourself yes thank you thank you so much for first of all bringing us together and reminding us about the powerful um impact of our bridging as one unit. Um, I noticed the question is for all of you if you wish, but I noticed the picture uh, is really a dodecahedron, which is the um, also the uh, logo for the uh, work of esoteric triangles. So I was curious, uh, Kathy, could you talk a little bit more about the power of the overlay of triangles into other, into forms such as a uh, dodecahedron. Thank you. Well, I'm not, I'm not sure I can really answer that question, but just to state that the triangle is considered to be the basic building block of the subjective reality. And so there is, perhaps no real starting point and no end to its ability to reach into the highest realms of consciousness and into the most minute atoms of substance. It's all brought about through mutating triangles. So, I mean, that's one way I look at it. But um, as you know, Martha, the the teaching on triangles in the book Esoteric Astrology, uh, which is the, we're told the greatest and oldest of all the sciences, gives us just a fragment of insight into the depth of the various triangles which are conditioning our planet. And that's just a focus on our simple little non-sacred planet. We're linked to the entire uh, local system through networks of stars and constellations and planets and importing energy. So just suffice it to say, as I said, it's a never ending network of triangles that connects all things. And I guess we're supposed to learn about some of these overshadowing triangles. It will help to expand our consciousness. But maybe Dot or Sasha might have something to add. I can say that it uh, go ahead, Dot. It's a, go ahead, Alexander, then I'll share. Uh, I would s say that it's definitely an invitation for our collective exploration. The practical aspect of the triangles work, as many other things, mm, information that Tibetan gave us, uh, those are just formulas. Those often are just hints to bigger truth. And it's always an invitation for our exploration, individual exploration. And in the case of the triangle, it's a, it's invitation for group exploration. And uh, as I mentioned in the 2025 initiative, we started experimenting with the work of the triangles. And as that one formula that I said about one radiant point and two receptive points. So. Like you see in uh, our triangle today with Kathy, Kathy is a radiant point that she shares, she brings forward, and Dot and I will work uh, with her in the triangle. It's just one way to uh, interpret that formula. And when we look 
and this particular image, it's same, it's a formula, it's symbol uh, of the interlinkage of subjective triangles that creates the etheric substance of the world group and beyond mm. the world group. Because I think, um, as you know, the, uh, the esoteric astrology uh, has a big portion is based on the science of the triangles. So all the astrological um, energies are distributed through triangles. And so we can guess that that's the law through which the hierarchy and the hierarchies are working with. Mm. Over to you, Dot. Yeah, thank you, uh, Kathy and Alexander. And, and appreciate the question, Martha. Agreed, it's about our collective exploration. You know, of all the platonic solids, the dodecahedron is beyond earth, air, fire, water. It is said to be about a more universal substance. And in the Agni Yoga uh, teaching, it's said to be the symbol of the mother of the world. It's based on the number 12. So when we just when we think mm -hmm. about the number 12, that's uh, all by itself something. So yeah, our collective uh, meditation, unified thought, but it seems to be as Kathy was saying, at the very heart of substance itself, and when we think of the heart and its 12-petaled lotus, and then heart after heart after heart, um, yeah, let us continue to unite our hearts across distance, vertical and horizontal. Alex. Hello. Welcome. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, following what everyone said about New York, thank you so much for highlighting its role in the planet and planetary scheme. So I wanted to ask a question, which is, what is? Could you verbalize? Could you all summarize? for us what that vision is for the role of America in the world, according to what DK told us. I just thought it would be very useful to take away a clear thought form and a vision uh, following what Kathy said, you know, to, to hold it in mind. And also, could you say how, could you just say something about how we uh, get there from here and um, how you how you see that how, how you see that happening we want to I sort of want to enter into the feeling of the work that's taking place within within the states now to get to that vision so I thought if you could outline that vision well of course that's um you know, you know, a subjective understanding which can be wrong. But if I could try and speak to um, what the Tibetan does bring forward in my own yes. interpretation yes. of it. Well, as I said, you know, I think the United States is, because of its position uh, as the central planetary center and because of its keynote, I light the way, um, we know that in the life of an individual, if they stand at the center of a group, or if they um, you know, are attempting to embody something for the collective, that that position can easily be under attack, um, easily be um, you know, at risk of falling prey to the pressures that are pouring in through that point. And so that's why I was encouraging us as a, as a group, but also as a global community to not fall into the all too easy attacks that are you know levied against the united states because of its youth mm -hmm. you know we are, we do know that it is a youthful and therefore prone to exaggeration prone to bombast prone to adolescent behavior we yeah. need to be understanding of the the youth 
of this country and as compared to Europe, for example. And but to recognize that of, as often is the case, it is often the young who bring in the new vision, who bring in the life and who are um, experimental, you know. So the United States, I think one of its key qualities of anybody who lights the way is the willingness to experiment, the willingness to not listen necessarily to the authority, uh, the structures of the more established places on the planet. And so I think there has to be a certain ability for us to just support the United States subjectively mm -hmm. so that we can, therefore, those of us who live here can mm -hmm. be supported to evoke the soul of this nation. But I, I do think it's a collective act. I really don't think it's just the responsibility of the disciples in the United States, but more importantly, because it's stance as a central point to and it is the home of the United Nations, which is composed of all these nations. It's not a United States thing. It shouldn't be. Um, that I think whatever we do to support the United States and to support New York supports the whole group of world servers through the Association of the United Nations. And so it's a, it's a great opportunity. The States is ruled by Aquarius at the soul level. And it's ruled at the personality level by Gemini. So it's a, a really mm -hmm. strong two influences that are aligned with the incoming energies because Gemini is also an air sign, as is Aquarius. And so um, there's a real intelligence, DK says, to the United States. But um, that youthfulness can cause a lot of bombast and cause a lot of trouble. So um, I think. The country needs to have that stabilizing subjective support, which is so powerful when given freely by a trained group of meditators, you know, yeah. to just enable the, the angel of the country rather yeah. than the dweller to um, be strengthened, to pull us through and to know that all of this, um, what we're going through globally at the present time is, is the result of glamour. and it's coming to the surface and the Tibetan has always said that that's the best thing that can happen. It has to come to the surface and then it can be dealt with. And I think many people in the States are recognizing, seeing through the veils and doing what they can to bring in the light. So I think it's a very optimistic time actually um, from the perspective of what the new group is is doing and how it's going to be so strengthened this year and then it's poised to make even wider strides you know so it is the home of old atlantis we're told so there's a great openness here and receptivity to the hierarchy you know the hierarchy walked on the ground of the united states and so uh, it's prepared in a certain sense you know it's prepared for um, externalization so it would seem that the externalization would probably start in the New York area, I would think, just because it lights the way. So maybe in association with the United Nations, who knows? Yeah. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> what an inspiring answer. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thanks for calling that question, Alex. And. <laughs> It's yeah, because when, when you when we talk about this, Kathy, you just inspired me, and I love hearing your optimism around this. Uh, and it, you've called the USA. I've heard you call it the synthesis of all nations, and it it makes me mindful of two keynotes: freedom and unity. And uh, just a very quick story that uh, when I first heard it many decades ago. It just really stays with me. This, at the signing of the Declaration of Independence, as the story goes, in a barn-like facility, right, in the uh, northeast of this country, of the United States. So all the signers were just squabbling and debating and discussing in high voices and not all agreeing. And they had, Benjamin Franklin had locked them into this barn you know, putting the things on the doors on the inside. 
And suddenly, up as, as it was a high pitch of disagreement, up in the rafters, in the hayloft, stood a figure clothed in white, who as he began to speak, everything quieted in the room below. Mm. And he spoke to this great experiment called the United States of America, or shall we call it the new America, that has the potential of bringing through the qualities of Aquarius as it dawns. With these keynotes of freedom and unity, equality for all, liberty, justice, and as he spoke, and it was so quiet you could hear a pin drop, one by one, the signers arose and went, and as the saying goes, signed their John Hancock. And when it was complete, they looked up. There was no one there in the hayloft, and they were still locked within the barn. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, we should be open to impression of to what's possible you know there's there's such a link and the hierarchy is is always looking for avenues whereby it can express itself uh, and so we know that that can happen through the etheric network at any time and so we have to be mm. open to it mm. And triangles affords such an opportunity for that, Kathy, and mindful once again of the import of this seven-year cycle festival week as we prepare together and find ways to come together intentionally to create those moments during that week. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. It's so important to have these things voiced. It would be good if you did your own news broadcast from America <laughs> to remind the world. <laughs> you could be an anti-Fox news program. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. No anti, no anti. Sorry. No, exactly, exactly. No. We, you, you should join with Marianne Williamson and, and we, we, you know, we need to hear these things. The world needs to hear these things. Yeah. about America. Thank you. I think New York has a um, interesting, you know, ray energy controlling it because we are told that it's, it's, it's as the planetary center, it's the inlet for the sixth ray. And so we have to wonder I would believe that that sixth ray influence would be the higher aspects, the higher manifestation of sixth ray, which is, as I said earlier, ruled by Neptune, um, the planet which um, is really the Christ, it's really the representative of the Christ energy, uh, the cosmic Christ. And so it's, I think, a very different energy than the energy ruling the personality of the United States, which we're also told is sixth ray, but that sixth ray personality would be working through the militant and warlike planet Mars. Whereas on a higher turn of the spiral, New York as a planetary center, not only for the United States, but for the whole Western hemisphere, brings through a much more refined manifestation of sixth ray. And Neptune, we're told, is actually the synthesizing planet on the second ray line. So it's overriding above and beyond sixth ray influence. It's an inlet for love, which coincides with the soul of the nation, which is also found on the second ray in the love aspect. So as New York, the Tibetan says, as New York comes into increasing prominence in the national life, he says that one day, actually, the government will move from Washington DC into New York and therefore be more fully aligned with the planet. It's as if, you know, now New York is uh, functioning on a planetary level, but not as much as a national um, point. Whereas in perhaps the not too distant future, um, 
New York coming into prominence will unite us with the planet, moving us away from uh, partisan politics, hopefully. Yeah. I've unmuted uh, Avon Medicine, but Avon, please un unmute yourself. You unmuted on your end. I was, I am, I, uh, the, yes, I we can hear you. My, yes, I dropped my hand because I realized that the conversation that is occurring is so rich in its depth and scope that um, what I had to offer might be a little bit uh, not, not quite um, relevant. So I, and I knowing that how important it is that we be able to go into meditation. Um, I will just add a couple of things that has been said that it was Master R who was the one who appeared during that in, in the loft at that time. And um, Dot would probably know more about that than I, but I remember that one of the teachings that Manley Hall gave about the United States is that not only, as Kathy pointed out, as the United States a synthesis of, of nations, but that in the United States, because everyone is in some way, except for the indigenous ones, an immigrant, that it represents the diversity of all humanity. Yeah. And that in the great seal of the United States of America, e pluribus unum represents part of what Kathy was speaking about in terms of its role, meaning out of many, one. Mm -hmm. And in that, uh, the great seal, there is the great triangle that can be interpreted in many other ways, but that uh, lighted eye in the triangle relating to the Ajna Center within not only New York, mm. but with humanity, which is relevant to the group of new group of world servers. Mm. I mm. think it's relevant at these times. And also when we say America, the beautiful part about saying that it has only to do with all of America. Because mm -hmm. in indigenous language, America is, comes from Amarica, Turtle Island. So it goes all the way from the Aleutian Islands, all the way to the tip in South America of Tierra del Fuego. Mm. So the beautiful part is when it says, people say, God bless America. It's all of America, all of this continent. So when you mm. think of this continent as a whole and the relativity of the role of the United States of America within North America, which includes Canada, and then there's Central America and South America. There's some. There's a triangle there, as well. As well. So just yeah. wanted to offer that into the conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Feel in the love. <laughs> there are more raised hands, and uh, we are uh, started approaching the time of the. Uh, meditation. I want to unmute the uh, last speaker and then uh, uh, one attendee who raised his hand. Uh, and then there will be one more question that came from the audience that I still want to bring uh, for us to share on. So, uh, Karen, you're unmuted. Increasing and regular number of these webinars and broadcasts have provided a powerful continuity of contact with the members of our global community. And I think that this continuity of contact is a precursor to developing the continuity of consciousness, Kathy, that you're talking about. I'm very grateful for them and for being, you know, for being able to participate in them. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. And there's uh, one last question. Um, I found it specifically interesting. Uh, came from uh, Nathaniel, who asked, as a telepathic communicators, what are our next steps? Anyone has any thoughts on that in our triangle or in the audience? 
I think it would be interesting to hear that. What should be our next steps as telepathic communicators? So, Nate, if you have access to a microphone, will you kindly share your thought about that? And then, then we're happy to, to comment. I, I would just say um, what comes to my mind is that we have to just continue to strengthen what we're already doing. I, nothing, I mean, I don't come up with a, uh, a new program that has to be implemented, but rather a fuller application to what we've already been doing, which probably for most of us includes a morning meditation, a noontime recollection, a five o'clock link up, a sunset hour uh, link up using the Gaia tree if possible, and then this fuller application to the new and full moon cycles, as well as uh, now extending it also to include an observation of the equinoxes and solstice points and and particular emphasis on the major eclipse points of the year. I think if we do that, um, keep those alignments in seventh ray fashion, then we're doing, we're doing a lot to prepare our vehicles because it's mostly preparing our, our vehicles to be um, receptive to the, the energies. That's what I would say. Yeah, beautiful, Kathy. The only thing I would add to that is triangles. That if yes, we have opportunities all the time for to add triangles to our list, and as Alexander said earlier, to intentionally work in triangle, uh, even with these outer initiatives that so many of us are involved in, so that we continue to to build that unified field very intentionally. Hello, Christina, did you want to add something to that? Um, I would just add that indeed deepening our spiritual bridging in enabling the divine circulatory flow of Aquarius during Pisces, we have a very strong opportunity to do that because that that inherent characteristic within each of us that that yearns towards the divine is very present at this time, and we are told by hierarchy as esotericists. It is of great import that we restore that divine circulatory flow between those inner worlds and outer. I'm very grateful for this work. And I would only add that speaking of the youthfulness of the United States, Alex, their Congress, we now, the youth, younger folks have come out, started voting. There's women, there's Muslims, there's different races. And this is a quite, um, I think, transformative moment for the youth. And it is the youth who have empowered this, starting with the Parkland survivors, 18-year-olds, 17-year-olds, 14-year-olds that are just starting to come into their own are very active on the scene, even though we don't hear about them, and they're not going to go away. So I find that a great source of uh, joy. Thank you, Maria Cristina. Rebecca? And Antonella, you're muted on your end. Yes, I just wanted to say that, um, just returning to the points that Dot was making earlier about this field of love that we've um, <laughs> been discussing a little bit as we prepare for World Service Week as well. And um, I think um, that's a really important part of our preparation and we speak about accessing the will to good and I'm not sure if I have the technicalities right, but I feel like 
we actually need to use the will to good to access goodwill. And, um, and part of using the will to good is um, working with the glamours in ourselves and our personalities so that we can, you know, bring about that situation where there aren't obstructions between ourselves and our brothers. And, you know, most of the time or oftentimes they do come up, not most of the time, because I, I think the inspiration that's being given here um, inspires the will to good so that we um, become more determined to reach up. But I just wanted to put that in there that um, part of our work is working with the glamours and, and um, really trying to purify this field of love so that these energies can come through without distortion. Yeah. Mm, thank you. Yeah, um, here is Antonella. I will add uh, two things. What struck me was the word omnipresence of the first law of the um, telepathic communication. And so uh, I think that a step um, forward for our being uh, communicators is really to focus on this reality, which is the omnipresence of the one humanity. And so, and also that this omnipresence has different layers of uh, reality. And for example, I was also thinking beyond what uh, we have already said that uh, United States is also characterized by the fact that the six ray um, advanced and preparatory schools um, are uh, there and the case as in letters of occult meditation that uh, that is why in the past or there were uh, mysteries of the six ray in this land so to me to imagine this omnipresence of the one humanity but uh, also developing or being through seven um, seven rays uh, currents so united states is really probably uh, taking care of the six uh, ray and also plane astral plane of the one humanity and for example me uh, being in italy with france is the third ray means that in the past there were mysteries for the third ray initiates so to see uh, each nation, each place in our one earth with the seven centers as continents, like the, um, the places for this omnipresence to irradiate, uh, but through the um, tasks that every um, nation, but not nation, but really the seven or 14 places in the earth, on in the one humanity, where the mysteries will be um, uh, lit again uh, in the new culture. So United States for the sixth ray, or Egypt and Greece uh, and Syria for the first ray, the last one probably, and so on. We, we had all the seven ray places in the, in the book of decay. So yes. That's what I wanted. And thank you for the wonderful triangle work. Thank you. I think it's now time for us to move to a meditation. Okay. So I'm going to just use our standard full moon approach to the hierarchy, which we use at the trust. And I'll read the keynote of this all this work. 
He who faces the light and stands within its radiance is blinded to the issues of the world of men. He passes on the lighted way to the great center of absorption. But he who feels the urge to pass that way, yet loves his brother on the darkened path, revolves upon the pedestal of light and turns the other way. He faces towards the dark, and then the seven points of light within himself transmit the outward streaming light. And lo, the face of those upon the darkened way receives that light. For them, the way is not so dark. Behind the warriors, twixt the light and dark, blazes the light of hierarchy. So let's link together with each other here in this group, but also with all our coworkers throughout the world. And let's just take a few minutes to do that. We affirm the fact of group fusion and integration within the heart center of the group of world servers, bridging or mediating between hierarchy and humanity, sounding the mantra of group fusion. I am one with my group brothers and all that I have is theirs. May the love which is in my soul, pour forth to them. May the strength which is in me lift and aid them. May the thoughts which my soul creates reach and encourage them. Alignment. We project a line of lighted energy towards the spiritual hierarchy of the planet, the planetary heart, the great ashram of Sanat Kumara, and towards the Christ at the heart of hierarchy. And we extend the alignment towards Shambhala, the center where the will of God is known. Higher interlude, holding the mind open to extra planetary energies streaming into Shambhala, radiating through the hierarchy. 
visualize the three planetary centers of Shambhala, hierarchy and humanity coming into eventual alignment and interplay. Meditation on the keynote for Pisces. I leave the Father's home, and turning back, I save.
precipitation using this sixfold progression of divine love. Visualize the energies pouring out through Shambhala, through the hierarchy, through the world teacher, the group of world servers, men and women of goodwill everywhere in physical centers of distribution. Another interlude. Refocusing the consciousness as a group within the periphery of the great ashram, sounding together the affirmation of love. In the center of all love, I stand. From that center, I, the soul, will outward move. From that center, I, the one who serves, will work. May the love of the divine self be shed abroad in my heart, through my group, and throughout the world. Visualize the downpouring inflow of spiritual energy from Shambhala through the hierarchy, streaming into humanity, and consider how these inpouring energies are establishing the pathway of light for the coming world teacher.
distribution. Sounding the great invocation. Visualizing the energies pouring out through the five planetary centers of London, Darjeeling, New York, Geneva, Tokyo. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the human, the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Thank Thanks, you. everyone. Please let be connected and please join our coming webinars on March 9th. Pisces New Moon webinar. At this webinar, we will finish the second cycle as we go through the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and we'll inaugurate the new cycle going for the next 17 miles through each goal. And this time, our focalizing triangles will be um, consisted of. Sydney Goodwill Group with Judy Norman and Mar and Wendy Thompson from Australia, Marco Toscana Rivalta from Italy, and Marta Gallagher from United States. And on March 20th, please join our Equinox Festival and Aries Solar Festival webinar at which the 2025 Initiative Coordination Group will announce the 
year focus and the program for the coming astrological year. Thank you very much and Om Shanti. Let's be in touch.